Hi, I'm Rebecca Clausen, the Finance Specialist for the Charter School Office at Lake Superior State University. I'm going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation on fund balance as part of a series of uh, short videos that we'll be producing for our Academy Boards. This PowerPoint presentation will be available on our website if you would like to print it or follow along. Our website where you can find that is www.lssu.edu slash charter. Fund balance, in its most simple definition, is the difference between assets and liabilities on the balance sheet. It is comprised of any existing fund balance at the beginning of the reporting period, coupled with the net change in the income statement for that reporting period. Essentially, it's what's left over after the fund's assets have been used to satisfy the fund's liabilities. Sometimes it's difficult to give a definitive answer as to how fund balance should be interpreted because different users of the financial statements have different needs. For example, a financial institution that's considering lending funds to an academy will interpret fund balance differently than, say, a parent at a school board meeting. Given these differences in interpretation, there are some fundamentals to consider when trying to analyze fund balance. One such fundamental is that fund balance is only reported in the governmental funds, not for any proprietary funds or for the Academy as a whole. The best way to envision fund balance is in terms of the fund it is associated with. For example, a special revenue fund exists for a specific revenue source and the uses of those resources. So the remainder after the liabilities have been satisfied would be a fund balance with certain limitations imposed on it. Since June 15, 2011, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board has required implementation of GASB pronouncement number 54. This pronouncement reclassified fund balance designations from reserved and unreserved into five new categories. These new categories are presented on the balance sheet in a hierarchy from most to least restricted. We'll have more on the fund types of classifications later on in the presentation. This is an example of an annual audit of a combined statement of revenue, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. It's also known as an income statement. It shows all the revenues and expenditures for each governmental fund that the Academy operates. As I stated earlier, essentially fund balance is the residual amount left after the fund's assets have been used to satisfy the fund's liabilities, which is why the change from this statement is added to the beginning fund balance for the reporting period. In the example, the circled area represents this change. The beginning fund balance for the period is shown in the circled area which is combined with the beginning fund balance, that combined figure is the ending fund balance for the reporting period. This ending fund balance is carried over to the balance sheet for the reporting period. This is an example of an annual audit of the combined governmental balance sheet. It shows all the assets, liabilities, and fund balance for each governmental fund that the Academy operates. Earlier I mentioned that fund balance is the difference between assets and liabilities, which is represented by the equation assets equals liabilities and fund balance. The total fund balance for each fund presented must match the ending fund balance from the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance which is the statement that was on the slide before this. You can see how the fund balance in the circled area matches that. Some of the new categories of fund balance introduced in GASB number 54 are shown in this example. The next few slides will discuss each of the new designations of fund balance. Prior to June 15, 2011, Fund balance was designated into two types, reserved and unreserved, with reserved having two categories, designated and undesignated. 
After June 15, 2011, GASB pronouncement number 54 requires designations into five categories into just two. These new designations are presented in descending order from the most restricted to the least restricted. The first three are non-spendable, restricted, and committed. They are most similar to the old classification of reserved. The last two are assigned and unassigned. They are most similar to the previous classification of unreserved, designated, and unreserved undesignated. These are the least restricted types of fund balance. Non-spendable is the category of fund balance that is the most restricted because these amounts are not in spendable form, which means that they are not expected to be converted into cash, usually represented by something like inventory or prepaid items. Non-spendable is also not in spendable form because they are legally required to remain intact, for example, a corpus or the principle of a permanent fund. Restricted fund balance is segregated based on a specific purpose by either an external party or imposed by law. The definition of restricted fund balance is the same as the definition used in GASB number 34 for restricted net assets. Net assets are the academy as a whole. An example would be a principal payment in a debt service fund for a bond indenture. Committed fund balance are amounts designated for a specific purpose based on the action of the academy itself. In other words, formal action taken by the school board such as a resolution. A resolution to designate resources as committed fund balance must occur prior to the end of the fiscal year. However, if the dollar amount hasn't been decided upon, that can be known later. The same formal action is required to change the amount or to remove the designation. Assigned fund balance. For all governmental funds except the general fund, assigned fund balance is any residual amount not classified as non-spendable, restricted, or committed. Assigned fund balance for any fund except the general fund must be positive. For the general fund, assigned fund balance is the amount that the academy itself or an official of the academy with the authority to assign amounts has intended for a specific purpose. This intent is not a commitment because it is not required to have a formal resolution. Any fund with assigned fund balance cannot result in a deficit unassigned fund balance. They must remain positive. Unassigned fund balance. This is the least restricted fund balance designation. Within the general fund, unassigned is a catch-all for any amounts that are not already segregated, such as non-spendable, restricted, committed, or assigned. The general fund should be the only fund with a positive unassigned fund balance. Any other fund that reports an unassigned fund balance would report it as a deficit. When it comes to deciding on the classification between the five different types of fund balance, it's usually safe to assume that the classification should represent the nature of the designation. For example, in a debt service fund, the payment of principal on an outstanding bond would need to be segregated based on the fact that those resources would be used to satisfy the payment. So a restricted fund balance would be appropriate for that transaction. Not all academy governmental funds will have every type of fund balance designation. Each academy should review their policies regarding which types of funds are used first. If no policy has been adopted, then the default usage would begin with committed, then assigned, then unassigned. One of the most common questions regarding fund balance that I get is how much should we have? This is a great question, but there are so many different answers. The short answer is to make sure that in the event that there was a loss of revenue, 
there would be enough to meet the liabilities of the Academy until another funding source can be obtained. Another really good resource I found is from the Michigan School Business Officials. They recommend that schools maintain a fund balance of 15% of the general fund expenditures. Also try to remember that it takes time to build up a fund balance. A new school may not have such a large fund balance but over time could accumulate it to a comfortable amount. A school can also consult with their external auditors to obtain a recommendation and perhaps adopt a policy regarding a minimum fund balance. Certain disclosures are required in the notes of the audited financial statements for each academy. Such policies regarding expenditures, a minimum fund balance requirement, or a description of the authority required to designate fund balance. Your external auditor will be able to assist with the required note disclosures. This is an example of what the different types of fund balances in the governmental funds may look like. Note the descending order from the most to the least restricted, beginning with non-spendable and ending with unassigned. Again, not all governmental funds will have all five types of fund balances. Resources. There are so many great available resources, including the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, which is the very first website posted up here, the gatsby.org. Another favorite resource that I like to use is the Michigan Public School Accounting Manual. That can be found electronically on the State of Michigan's Department of Education website. I use that very frequently as a resource. Your external auditors, I can't recommend them enough as a great source of knowledge and experience. Also, myself, if you have any questions or you need clarification on any kind of subject, I would be more than happy to assist you. Please contact me at my direct number, which is 906-635-2279, or feel free to email me. My email is posted on this page. It's rclawson at lssu.edu. Thank you for your participation, and have a great day.